I humbly and I pray carefully intend tonight to bring you the word of this great God and his word and the study of it ignites his worship. And so we've worshiped in song, now we will worship through the word. So if you have a Bible, and I really hope you do, if you don't, (laughs) shame upon you. I want to remind those of you who have been before and relay to those of you who this is your first time tonight that the purpose of our time together is far deeper than to study angels, demons, and spiritual warfare. I want to be clear from the start. This is not just a game. There is a real battle waging for real souls of men and women and little boys and little girls all around the world. And the stakes in this battle are high. They are higher than any war that has ever been fought or will ever be fought in this world. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said... Let light shine out of darkness. Made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. From the very beginning tonight, I want you to feel the weight of this text. There is a battle that is waging between the God, little g, God of this age, who is blinding the minds of unbelievers, and a God, big g, God over heaven and earth, who is shining light into hearts. Feel this. There is a true God of light who desires people all over this world to be saved. And there is a false God in this age of darkness who desires people all over this world and in this room to burn in hell. And you and I are right in the middle of it, verse five, preaching Christ. This is where we have got to decide who we are. In the late 1940s, the government of the United States commissioned the SS United States. It was an $80 million troop carrier built for the Navy. It was designed to carry 15,000 troops into war. The fastest, most reliable troop carrier in the world. It could go 10,000 miles without having to stop for fuel or supplies. It could outrun any other ship. Go anywhere in the world in less than 10 days. The only catch was it never carried any troops. It was put on standby once during the Cuban Missile Crisis, but it was never used in all of its capacity by the U.S. Navy. Instead, it became known as a luxury liner for presidents, heads of state, and celebrities. Now, as a luxury liner, it couldn't carry 15,000 troops. 
just under 2,000 passengers, could enjoy the luxuries of 695 staterooms, four dining salons, three bars, two theaters, five acres of open deck with a heated pool, 19 elevators, and the comfort of the world's first fully air-conditioned passenger ship. Instead of a vessel for battle used during the trenches of wartime, the SS United States became a means of indulgence for wealthy patrons who wanted to coast peacefully across the Atlantic seas. And I'm convinced that we need to answer a central question in the church today. And that question is, are, are we as the church a troop carrier? Or are we a luxury liner? Are we a troop carrier or are we a luxury liner? Because things look radically different on a troop carrier than they do on a luxury liner. There's some critical differences. Our demeanor will be different. The faces of soldiers that are preparing for battle look a lot different than the faces of patrons enjoying their bonbons. Our use of resources will be very different. The conservation of resources on a troop carrier contrasts sharply with the liberal opulence of a luxury liner. And our pace will be different. The pace at which a troop carrier moves is by necessity much faster than a luxury liner. After all, a troop carrier has an urgent mission to accomplish. The luxury liner is free to enjoy the ride along the way. I am convinced that in the church in our day, we have settled into an understanding of the church as luxury liner. The church exists to make me feel comfortable, to adjust to my preferences and cater to my desires. And in the process, we have lost sight of an eternal battle that is waging around us. And we have a crucial decision before us, church. Are we going to indulge ourselves in the peaceful comforts of this world? Or are we going to engage ourselves in battle for peoples around the world? This is the question I am convinced we face in the church in our day. And I want to call you tonight to get on board a troop carrier and to give your life to defeating an adversary and taking the gospel of a kingdom to the ends of the earth, no matter what it costs you. That's what tonight is about. Secret Church is not designed to be luxury liner material. Tonight is not about catering to our comforts. Tonight is about equipping a body of people. Not entertaining a body of people, but equipping a body of people in this room and down the hill to know who you are in Christ and to know what it means to walk in victory with Christ, but not just so that you can experience victory, so that you might lead others to victory in the nations that they might know the gospel of the kingdom that we celebrate in this room tonight, the great God that we sing to. So as we study, my encouragement for you is to take good notes. You're studying tonight not just for your sake. This is not just so that you can you could have more information. It's so that you can be equipped to take the word of God on angels, demons, spiritual warfare and practice it in the places where you go and teach it in the context where you live and God takes you around the world. This is bigger than what's just going on in this room. So write all over these pages. Make notes to go back into your Bible in the days ahead. I want to give you as much information as possible tonight in the time we have on maybe a little extra, on angels and demons and spiritual warfare. The goal tonight is not for 3,000 people to walk away saying, that was fun. The goal is for 3,000 people to walk away from this campus tonight equipped and ready to take the nations for the glory of Christ in defeating an adversary. So, you in? Okay, here we go. All right. Just a little light intro. Here's where we're going. Here's where we're going. Foundational truths. What I want to do is I want us to camp out on some foundational truths that are going to set the stage for everything else in the evening. And then we're going to split it up into these three categories. Like the title, angels. We're going to look at who are they, how are they organized, what do they do, how do they relate to us. Then demons. What are demons? 
Who is Satan? How does Satan and demons relate to God? How does Satan and demons relate to us? Then we'll go to spiritual warfare. And we're going to take three major periods in redemptive history. The Old Testament, the picture of Christ in the Gospels, and then the church, the New Testament, the letters, the epistles. And we're going to look at spiritual warfare and those three facets of Scripture. And then we will conclude our night with controversial questions. What about deliverance ministry, casting demons out of people? Can a Christian be demon-possessed? Should we talk with demons, conversing, naming, binding demons? Can we inquire or acquire or inherit demons from other places or people? I thought that would be the most appropriate topic for around midnight tonight. So that's where we will be. And we will close out with two concluding challenges that have absolutely gripped me like I want to get to those now. But we're going to work our way there. So... 